Today, I'm gonna to answer the controversial question, can women be ministers? Now, at this time, I could just see two factions, those who are for, those who are against, and they're ready to either jump on me and condemn me, or others are ready to lift me up and praise me. Listen to me, it's not about me, it's about what the Word of God and the prophetic message of the Bible says about this, this subject. I want you to read Psalm 68, verse 11. It says, the Lord announces the word, and watch this, and the women who proclaim it are a mighty throng. He's already declaring that women are going to preach the good news. The New American Standard Version says, and the women who proclaim the good tidings are a great host. The English Standard Version says, the women who announce the news are a great host. Now, the King James, it leaves out the word woman. And good reason, the Anglican church was not in favor of women ministers at the time. Therefore, they conveniently left out the Hebrew word. But make no mistake about it, God is declaring a time is coming when there's gonna be a great number of women proclaiming the good news of the gospel. Well, this goes along with what Joel said and Peter himself declared. He said, this is what is written in the book of Job, what the prophet Joel said, that in the last days, this is Acts 2, 7 and 18, in the last days, God's going to pour out his spirit on all people, both sons and daughters. Both sons and daughters shall prophesy. Notice, in other words, he's declaring that women will be part of the proclamation of this last day gospel message. So prophetically, God is declaring women are going to be a part of this last day message. Even the Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 4, he says, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. So there we're seeing that God is going to so touch all of humanity that there's going to be no distinction when it comes to the proclaiming of the gospel. That slaves are going to preach it, free men will preach it, and also, what does he say? Females are going to preach it, as well as males. In other words, there's going to be no distinction. Now, when we see in the early church, what do we find? Jesus made the woman the first evangelist of the church. And that was Mary Magdalene. She was the first one to see the risen Lord, not a man, but a woman. And he told her, go and proclaim to the disciples what you've seen. In other words, he's telling her, you be the proclaimer of the good news of the resurrection. So the first preacher of the resurrection was not a man, it was a woman. What I'm trying to show you in scriptures, God is declaring prophetically a, a new day is dawning on the human race. God is going to touch all of humanity. And it doesn't matter if they're male or female or slave or free, God's gonna to touch them all. Now, the Roman Catholic Church makes the argument why men can only be priests and not women. They argue that since Jesus ordained only men, the 12 apostles, and they were all men, God intended only men to be in the priesthood or in the ministry. Well, if we were to use that argument, then that would also exclude Gentiles because Jesus only picked Jewish, Jewish men. Well, friend, of course we know it doesn't matter. And there's a reason, in other words, you're not going to keep Gentiles from being ministers under that argument. No, that is not a good argument. We must recognize that God is doing something more than what meets the eye. And there's a good reason why Jesus picked only men to be the apostles, because they were going to represent the new Israel of God. Just as the old Israel were made from 12 sons of Israel, Jesus picked 12 men to bring forth the the, the new covenant, but it was not meant to say that women would not have a part of it. Even Israel had a, had a daughter, and of course, Jesus had Mary Magdalene, which represents the daughter of Israel. So what, what we're seeing in the New Testament is God's making changes. In Romans chapter 16, Paul mentions uh, the deaconess, Phoebe, in which the church met at her house. So we find in the early church a deacon, which is an ordained position. She was a deacon and she had the church meeting at her house. She was hosting the church of Jesus Christ. Can, can you see this? And so we see this whole idea. The apostle Paul, when he writes to Timothy, instructions about bishops and deacons, he also includes female deacons. Some of your translation says they're wives, but the Greek word is deaconesses, plural, just as male deacons. So we see already the churches having women as leaders.
we see also Priscilla and Aquila. That's a ministry team, husband and wife ministering together. It's interesting to note that every time this couple is mentioned in the Bible, Priscilla, the wife, is mentioned before Aquila, which is not normal. Normally, you would mention the man first, then the woman. Like, I now pronounce you man and wife, husband and wife. Always the man first. But every time this couple is mentioned, Priscilla's name is mentioned first, which shows me she was a leader within the church. What I'm trying to show you is there's more in the Bible that meets the eye. And I'm not ready to disqualify women because of their gender. Friend, whatever God wants to do, I'm all for it. Now, am I aware of a few passages like in Timothy where, he's, where Paul says, I do not allow a woman to teach a man? He's not referring, though, in church leadership. He's referring to husband and wife relationship, for he gives Adam and Eve as the example of that. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. What he's saying is, in the home, there is authority. And I do believe that husbands are the head in their home. But when it comes to the church, the head is whoever God anoints to be the preacher and teacher of the word. So in answer to the question, can, can women be ministers? Absolutely, yes. And not only can they, they are. If you think about it, Christianity is the first major religion to have women as leaders in the church. You don't find that in Hindu. You don't find that in Islam. And only recently are you finding it in Judaism. But the Christian church has been far long ahead of every religion. Why? Because we alone have received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And when God touches a woman, who are we to oppose God's touching a woman? And so, and my answer is, yes, women can be ministers. They are ministers. What would the church of Jesus Christ look like without women ministers today? We see the prominent role that women are are currently playing in the Christian church? So the answer is absolutely women can be ministers. And I want you to give it a second thought and quit putting God in a box saying it cannot happen. Now I'm aware of the church fathers. This is one of those, one and I, one of those rare times that I have to depart a bit from the church fathers. But outside of this, I do respect the church father's teaching, but I do believe they had a narrow view and understanding of scriptures on this. That's why I've shared with you scriptures to open your mind to the possibility that God can do whatever he wants. And I say, yes, women can be ministers.